is a caste one. I mean, you uh, ultimately, there is a decision of the Bombay High Court, which is a famous decision which decides who exactly we are and what we are supposed to be. Now, one of the judges was a Parsi judge, the other was an English judge. The English judge specifically called us a caste and said that because we were Hinduized to the extent now of being a caste, we were hard and fast like any other Brahmin or Kshatriya caste. Nothing could enter, whatever goes out, goes out. And the trouble is there is a real double jeopardy. And I'll explain what I mean. You see, a person who is born of a Parsi father is a Parsi, naturally, a patrilineal. Now, if the Parsi father has married out, the children can become Parsi. The trouble is the mother is not allowed in. Now, if the mother is not allowed in, the children becoming Parsis in any real or meaningful sense go. Yeah. First, first problem. Second problem. When the Parsi girl marries out, she can't bring up her children as Parsis. Now, very often, if she marries out, the son will not be allowed to be brought up as anything except what the father faces. But the daughters very often are allowed to be brought up as Parsi. But there again, our, until our law is changed, unfortunately this does not obtain here. So that you have this very, very funny now conundrum in the law. You have Parsi Zoroastrian being defined as a person who is born of a Parsi father and who follows the Zoroastrian. Not, not just the latter. <laughs> Anybody can follow the Zoroastrian religion. I can make you a Zoroastrian, straight away, no difficulty. But the trouble is to avail of everything in India, you need to have a dual qualification. Outside India, you are all right. <coughs> yeah. uh, you say Zoroastrianism is a fire-worshipping religion. No, I didn't say any such thing. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 this is the general notion. Yeah. If, you, if you didn't say You know, in Hinduism, all important uh, uh, ceremonies are around the fire, in the fire. Do you find any relationship, any significance as to how the you know, the, I'll tell you, the difference is this. Agni is a divinity in himself, in the Rig You see, Agni is worshipped as a god in himself. Fire in Zoroastrianism, as I told you, is not a god at all. There is no god other than Aura Mazda. First important difference. Second important difference. Fire in Zoroastrianism is symbolic alone. It's a symbol of truth. And I tried to explain how it was a symbol of truth by saying that it actually symbolizes a man's conscience. You can light it, you can kindle it, you can put it out. Which the other creation cannot. Animal creation, vegetable creation, cannot. It also cannot be produced. Well, in a, in, a, in a way, yes. In a way, no. If it feeds on something horrible, maybe it is or is not, but it certainly pollutes the atmosphere. Now, whether it itself is polluted or not is, a, is another difficult question. Any other question? Yes, Professor Zutaraman.
wants to yes, ask me whether I have heard of it. I have not heard of it. Not the least idea. Yes? Yes, it's all right. Mr. Rao wants to ask something. Yes. Cacophony, 
the sense that the priest prays inside the sanctum sanctorum where the fire is kept. People pray outside and each one prays himself individually. There is nothing like congregational prayer known to us unfortunately. So each one prays aloud, prays himself and uh, very often disturbed by the priest himself. <laughs> Yes, but that, that's not normal. The, he was asking as to what normally happens in a fire temple. This is the normal scenario. Sorry? Where is the temple here? Uh, at Sivasha Kotla. Uh, near, 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 De near Delegate. Yeah. I look up with you. Yes, sir. seems to be that it's a fire that represents uh, virtually everything universally from the lowest to the highest. So the idea is that you cannot possibly have anything lower than a corpse in Zoroastrianism. The moment the spirit leaves the body, the body is uh, a component of evil. I mean it's something that has to be disposed of immediately. So a fire burning on a corpse is perhaps the single most impure horrible thing. So from the most horrible to the most sublime and everything in between, that seems to be the idea. The concept is a very simple one. You see, just as an animal is disposed of naturally, ours is a natural process. The only difference is that a human body cannot, like an animal's body, be left to rot somewhere on the street. It must be put into a particular place where ultimately it can be disposed of by nature. Perhaps yes, perhaps yes. Perhaps yes, that's what I'm saying, perhaps yes. But then in burial it's useful to throw both of them in that sense. So I mean, that doesn't really... Yeah. The idea is also not to pollute, you see. Because in younger Zoroastrianism, the earth is considered sacred. Fire is considered sacred. So you don't pollute them by... Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, big problem. Big problem, yeah. It's a major problem. It is People are trying to solve it at the moment. In fact, now they have put up uh, massive uh, solar heaters, which now uh, apparently are able to reduce the box stress in there in three or four days. There is trouble here. Yeah. Any other question? We have friends with us. Mr. Pali Nariman, sitting in a corner, quietly, and uh, this is Nariman, that is Rapsi Nariman. I wonder if uh, Pali would like to say a few words before we conclude. Yes, uh, I must tell you, our Mr. Varma is uh, himself, Mr. Akhil Varma himself, is a historian. He has been writing books relating to uh, several historical aspects. One of them is the decisive battles of India through the ages, and it is in two volumes. This is one of his publications. And he is kind enough to ask me to present this to... such good number, including persons of great distinction, 
Bali I mentioned where our friend Mr. Shanti Bhushan present here. I wonder if he has any question or any suggestion to make. We made a great experience, ex-law minister, one of the topmost lawyers in the country. And I wonder, before I conclude, he would like to give us the benefit of some talk. members 
that is created the girls, <laughs> and not very a lot of versions, but I accept the daughter in laws who are not Russian, or the son in laws, and allow him to be a child of one parent who is Russian to adopt the faith. I think the long way to learn this very, very ancient and beautiful culture and religion. And with these words, uh, may I thank everybody present here, especially of this uh, speaker today, Jenny uh, Sipa as well, and all the other city members, very really funny, because everybody is a member in his own right out here, and we have the president and myself who uh, take this opportunity to thank you, and please come and join us for prayer. Thank you very much. If I may say, we welcome all of you to become members of this, this uh, small NGO and help us in, in having better activities. Uh,